everything is fine and that persons are empowered again. This is our ninth um, road safety presentation. And as usual, we begin our presentation with prayers. Right, very important for us to get divine assistance and divine strength during this period, especially in light of the fact that over 236 people have been killed in traffic crashes since the start of this year. Um, one other thing I would like to say is that we have to give thanks for life. And I would like to say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just want to thank you for life. We want to thank you that we are able to wake up this morning and come here to deliver another road safety presentation. I want to thank you for that profound favor that you have given us named life, almighty God. We want to thank you that you are protected from traffic crashes today so that we have an opportunity to come here to share road safety intelligence. And hopefully as we share this message, this message will give hope, it will give peace, it will be joy and real happiness. Father, all the persons who have been crash victims, whether they are injured and whether they are family members have to deal with death, Almighty God, cover the family members with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and cover those who are injured from a, as a result of traffic crashes. Mm -hmm. And may, may those who are alive today become road safety game changers, Almighty God, and make it their determination to do the right thing and not the wrong thing. These mercies we ask of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much again. Today we are going to speak about a very critical matter um, dealing with truck safety, the whole matter of inspection process. Now, the matters that I'm going to speak about are not matters that are legislated, right, at the present moment, but they are good practices if you, if you really care and love road safety as it relates to trucks. Trucks are, trucks are very important um, vehicle on the network, right? And um, we, we have to ensure that we we recognize that trucks carry many of our goods and we want those goods to be transported in a very safe manner. A manner that is dignified, a manner that will ensure that no one dies, no one is injured, right? As a result of traffic crashes, right? We have to be careful on the network. So again, thank you all for, for, for coming and thank you all for joining. And um, we, we really appreciate your, your presence and your time. Now, feel free if you have anything you want to say, you can put in the chat and we will try to address it as best as possible. So again, the issue of truck safety is very critical, right? Safety is the most important Thing to deal with whenever you are operating any vehicle, right? So therefore, I mean that we have to inspect our trucks, right? We must inspect our trucks, and it's very critical that we don't play with this matter at all. Um, we can't take it for granted. It's an as it, it is an aspect of truck safety that, in my view, it is overlooked, right? And that is why persons, again, I'm going to touch on some critical issues. No, I'm going to say this. Anybody who have a truck license in this chat room, just let us know. If you have a truck license, license to operate a truck, put it in the chat room. And if you have a license to operate truck, put it in the chat room and let us know, right, whether you were taught the inspection process of a truck before you operate a truck. So before you take the truck and drive the truck to a destination, I want you, if you have a truck license, right, to tell me if you were taught the inspection process. We're going to speak about the inspection process. And when I finish speaking about it, um, let me know if you were taught these things. Yes, let me know, right? Um, you, might, you may get a prize for that. Yeah, man, you may get a prize. You may. But you, you're going to have to tell us more things, too. So one other thing we have to do, we have to inspect our vehicle for defects so that it can prevent crashes and breakdowns. And the reason why we're doing this is because trucks normally um, transport millions of dollars worth of goods. And you can't afford to have a truck and it break down on its way to the destination. So just look at it. Look at this. You are supposed to move an oil tanker from Kingston to Montego Bay. And the... the there is an oil ship 
in the harbor in Montego Bay waiting for that oil, that truck, that ship will be leaving. So that ship will be leaving, say, at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Um, you are then required to move that truck. Say, you are given that time to move the goods. Say, for example, you are told that you need to leave Kingston at 8 o'clock to complete all the processes to ensure that that ship gets the oil. But on the way, say, for example, you reach um, Porus, not Porus, Priory Main Road in St. Anne, the truck breakdown. Um, and that breakdown of that truck will take hours to fix. You know that that ship that will be waiting for that oil to take it to Iran will not wait on you. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. It won't wait. It won't wait. If you're involved in a traffic crash on the journey, the ship not going wait on you either. Mm -hmm. Not going wait. If you're involved in a traffic crash, no, the ship not going wait. So therefore, it becomes critical for us to be very choosy and meticulous as it relates to the psychological frame of mind of the persons who operate these vehicles. I had speak last week or two weeks ago about the zones of driving personality. And for persons who operate trucks, you need to have these zones of driving personality, these proper, proper zones, right? So whilst the Road Traffic Act does not require drivers to inspect their vehicles before or during or after every trip, for safety reasons, we must do it. Yes, man, we must do it. We must do it. So I would like to encourage everyone to ensure that drivers have this skill. And uh, for me personally, right, um, your driving instructor is supposed to teach you. Yeah, man, supposed to teach you how to inspect the trucks. And also supposed to teach you the various parts on the truck and their roles, right? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Next week, we're going to talk about more things concerning the truck because the truck issue is a big issue. You know? Truck is a big topic, right? So we're going to speak about that. Now, one thing we must remember now, the Island Traffic Authority is mandated to ensure that defective vehicles are removed from the traffic environment. Yes, man, that's their responsibility, right? So if they find any unsafe vehicle on the road, they're going to put those vehicles out of service until you have, you have fixed it. Yes, man, until you have fixed it. So remember now, what they will do, the Island Traffic Authority inspectors, um, because you love to drive defective vehicles on the road, trucks, cars, etc. They are going, once they find these defects, whether defective tire, defective brake, defective suspension, defective steering wheel, um, defective brakes, defective brake drums, defective push rods, defective slack adjusters, yes, defective ear tank, defective um, earbags, um, all of the defective reservoir and all of these things that trucks carry. Once they find it, you know, yes, man, once they find it, they're going to issue an E1, yes, man, an E1. E1 certificate. That's a prize still. That's a prize. E1 is a prize. Now, when you, when you, when you correct the, the defects now, you get an E2. Yes, man, E2. Get used to these terminologies. E1, E2. So if your vehicle is defective and the Island Traffic Authority catch you on the road, yes, man, they're going to give you an E1, a prize that. So once they give you that prize, they're going to remove that license plate of your vehicle. Yes, man, they're going to remove the license plate. Mm -hmm. So when they remove that license plate now, you're going to have to correct that motor vehicle defect. And once you correct that motor vehicle defect, then you are going to have to um, pay a fee. Yes, man, you're going to pay a fee at the tax office. You pay a fee. And then you get a certificate of defects remedies. So this is the farm that you're going to get. Yes, this is the E1 farm that said that I certify, I hear by that the abandoned motor vehicle is not in a fit condition to be operated on the road. Yes, man. Um, and and the, the defects, Noted will be highlighted here, and the, the certifying officer will state whether or not he or she is satisfied that the fix can be remedied. So, this is the E1, and this will cause you right away. So, when you get an E1, your plate is going to be removed there. Just remember that. Don't forget that, you know. That's why your plate removed. Sometimes a vehicle driving out there, and they don't have any plates on it. Sometimes it's the island traffic authority remove the plates, man. But the vehicle defective, man, defective. Then, once you have complete, once you then go to your mechanic and get the defects sorted out. 
then you get an E2. Yes, man, E2 look like this. Certificate of defects remedied. So if you look here, E1, certificate of defects. E2, certificate of defects remedied. This is a certified that I have examined the dimension motor vehicle plate and find a defects in certificate, whatever, whatever, to be to be to have been remedied. So the inspector again will sign, the certified officer will sign right here. So yes, man, and there you go again to the road. You get back your plate and everything. Yes, remember, I know you're going to have to pay some money. Yes, man. So here we do know. Here what I would advise you to do. Just ensure that you don't get any certificate of defects. Make sure, ensure your vehicle is in good, good condition because you see the amount of money that you have to pay for certificate of defects, you can use it and put it towards fixing the vehicle. Yes, man. Prudent money. You have to work for money, you know. The Bible it says money answer all things. So don't use the money and pay a traffic ticket. Don't use them. Why you do, do the right thing, man? Cause you're going to have to do it. You, if, when you get the E1 now, you're going to, you're, you're going to have to get the E2, you know. So it, so you're still going to spend. So let me tell you spend now and, and finish. So you don't have to spend again. Right? Save the money in your pocket. Don't give away your money. Now, um, to when we spoke about hazardous material. Again, here we have to ensure that we do the inspection of the motor vehicle to ensure that whatever hazardous materials we are transporting, we ensure they are transported in a safe and dignified manner, right? And um, we spoke about the different levels, right, of classes of hazardous materials. And we spoke about the symbols on the motor vehicles. Um, this is something, again, um, I went to say this. Driving instructors in this country have not done a good job in ensuring that their drivers are properly prepared for the road network. Yes. If anyone in this chat room, um, when you were getting your driver's license, not speaking about trying to get a truck driver's driver license, if you were taught um, these hazardous material symbols, put it in a chat room if you were taught about it. I was never taught, right? I was never taught, right? The Road Traffic Act is right here. Um, you can find it on the internet. Um, read it for yourself, right? Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself, right? Always read the stuff for yourself. Um, do not, um, do not, um, do not play at all with it. Um, I'm seeing to, um, Cyril Angoy um, has a truck license. That's good. Thank you. That's good. That's good. Um, remind them that they can drive to the garage with the E1 and to the depot with the E2 to redeem their plates. Yes, yes, yes. That is true. That is true. That's true. That's true. Now, I just spoke about the whole matter of packaging. And this is something that as a driver, we have to be, the drivers must be aware of the proper way to package um, hazardous material and to ensure that they are not, um, they are not thrown around. You see, uh, uh, the person who operates a truck is a commercial driver, right? Um, so that those persons, are, are, are supposed to be highly skilled and, and highly knowledgeable of road safety and of the truck itself too. And they are supposed to ensure that the safety procedures are followed at all times, right? Um, these hazardous materials, we must always remember that they pose danger to health, safety and property during transportation. Hazardous material include explosive, various type of gases, solubles, right? And flammable and inflammable materials, combustible materials. Um, and, and as I said before, because of the risk involved in these transportation, um, the government, government at all levels across the globe have put in our, our, they are putting steps in place to ensure that vehicles are properly labeled and placarded so that person know, but you as a driver on the network, you are supposed to be filled with sonesis, frenesis, and sophia. You are supposed to get into the know. In the good book said, seek knowledge, always seek knowledge, always seek to empower yourself. Um, do not depend on a driving instructor to do it um, because they will carry you to soul to that level and then leave you. 
right? These are the nine classes, right? Get to know them because it's going to come on that big test that we're going to have. We're going to have a big, big test, right? And once you pass that, you'll get a good certificate from us. And um, because we are going to all the present, the test will cover all the presentation that we have started from July, right? Um, after our end of August, then we start to work on the test because we're going to ensure that persons know. And, and we're putting these things on the test, right? We're not into any joke thing at all. So you have to know all of these symbols. Know these symbols. Start to look out there as you drive on the network and you will begin to see these symbols on the motor vehicles and get to know what they mean, right? Flammable liquid, explosives. So once you see this, you know it's an oxidizer. Explosives, flammable liquid. So you know you must be careful on the network, right? Always um, the vehicles will be placarded, right? Know what they mean. Once you see these symbols, you know it's radioactive. And you know radioactive materials are materials not to be played with, right? They, they really can do you serious harm. Now, the inspection process requires us to do three, three things. Just like in, in, the, in the books, it said the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The same way we have three things involved in inspection. We say we have three things involved when a traffic crash occurs. We say human collision, vehicle collision, and internal organs collision. So for the most part, things normally happen in threes. Yeah, threes, right? Yeah, threes. It was on the third day that the most that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So three things. The, the, the three things always come. So just remember, three type of inspection you must do, right? Um, Pre-trip, during trip, after trip. Now, put in the chat room. I know there are persons from different countries here. Put in the chat room if your country requires truckers to inspect the truck on a daily basis. Yes, man. Whether there is pre-trip, whether there is a system in place that you must do a pre-trip, a during trip, or after trip inspection. Yeah, man, put in a chat room if you if if you if you do that. We're going to talk about these process. So the pre-trip inspection, I say, helps you to find out what problem that could cause a breakdown of a, or a crash. So what you're doing, what you're looking for during this inspection, you're looking at the tires, you're looking at all the axles, right? Yes. You check for proper tire pressure using an ear pressure gauge. Remember we spoke about tire safety on, 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 on Wednesday. And, and for the past, previous two weeks, we have been speaking about tire safety. Ensure that we don't have mismatched tires on the wheels, right? Right, mismatched tires on the wheels, right? So we have a wheel here, right? We have a wheel here, and then we have tires. We have one tire on the wheel. If you look here, we have one wheel, and we have more than one tires on the wheel, all right? So at least 1.66 millimeters tread depth all the time. Make sure the tires don't have cuts, bulges, and all of these things. Make sure that every, look for damaged rims or wheels. Look for rust around wheel nuts, loose lug nuts, missing clamps, spacers, studs are low. Anything that you see missing, look for oil leak. These are things that you're going to look for to ensure that you are doing your pre trip. So, during your pre trip, you must check out all your wheels, check out all your tires, and ensure that everything is in good, good condition. So, and make sure the oil not leaking and all of these things. And make sure that you have your proper fluid levels that you're supposed to have. Check your brakes now. Look for, the, look for your brake jumps and shoe problems, whether, they are, whether you have issues or not. Check them. Make sure you have adequate food on your, on your, on your, on your brake jumps, right? So that you can't waste time for you to stop that truck. You can't stop the truck. Look if there is crap jumps. Look if the jumps are crap, right? Look if oil or grease or those things are leaking, right? So look, ensure, in other words, look at your ear hoses, right? Look at those, check those things. Look for dents and all of these things, right? And um, broken or loose, like a adjuster, should not be more than 90 degree angle with brakes. When I, when I, there's, a, there's a presentation I'm going to do, you see? And it's going to deal with the parts on the truck, right? So whenever the brakes are applied on a truck, you don't want the slack adjusters to be more than 90 degrees. I'm going to show you what a slack adjuster is, right? But gentle people, those are things you're going to look for. The steering system, are there, you're looking for missing nuts, bolts, keys, or other parts of the steering box, right? You're looking again if there are leaks, right? You're looking if there are leaks, people, 
right? You're looking. So you're looking at, you, you will be inspecting the entire steering system, right? These things take time. And what, what people love to say, see, let me tell you something. People love to talk about, oh, that's going to take time. You know what take time? Crash, in, crash and go lie down in the hospital bed. And then you will know time. Yes, man. Crash and lie down in the hospital bed. And then you will know time. Look here. It's better to be safe than sorry. You hear? Okay. Do not compromise your safety. You enter this world without spear parts. Anybody in the chat room, if you enter this world with a spear hand, yeah, so instead of two and you have a spear that you put on, and you just say, when I'm ready, I'm going to use it. You enter this world with a spear nose, spear mouth, spear foot. Yeah, a spear hand. If you enter this world with spear parts, put it in the chat room. Yes, man, put it in the chat room. The last time I check, um, I check out myself, I realize I never enter with spear parts. So I don't know if there are special people here. And that's why we tell people, take your life serious. Do not compromise with your safety. So this is a part of the steering system that we want to ensure that it's in good, good condition, yes? Um, so, and that is why the person who operate a truck should go through special arrangements, should go through special treatments, yes, should get special training, right? So very important. Another thing that should be checked out is the whole matter of the suspension system, right? The suspension system holds up the vehicle and its load, it keeps the axles in place. Therefore, broken suspension parts are very dangerous, right? Very, very important that we put the requisite systems in place to ensure that we are checking these things. We have an inspection process. So basically what you should have, you should have a, a document, a checklist, highlighting everything that you need to do and know, right? And then you check if there is any form of um, defects or deficiency going on. These are some other popular parts that you will find on a truck. These are parts that we should take serious. These are parts that we should not play with, right? And as I said before, we're going to go into how some of these parts work and what are their purposes, right? And how it is very important for us when we are operating a truck, we need to ensure that um, it is properly saved. Because remember, you know, a truck is very heavy. It dissipates a lot of energy. And this kinetic energy that it dissipates can really be traumatic if it clap a car. A truck and a car meet in a confrontation, the car is going to lose, and all the occupants in the car are going to lose, right? Now, there are, this thing here is what we call leaf spring. That's what it's called. So as a, as a truck driver, you want to check if these leaf springs are in good order or they are broken. If they are broken, you want to have that reported to the relevant person, brought to light, and then now you have those things corrected. Under no circumstances, we would advise anyone to drive any defective vehicle on the road. These things will cause serious injuries. And I, I really think that whenever trucks are in collision, we really need to properly investigate these trucks. Because I don't think we have done a very good job at inspecting the trucks when they are involved in collisions. Um, and which, which I hope that we will spend more time dealing with. All right, so broken leaves. Um, so the next thing you drive beside a truck, um, you will notice some things. Now, this is another part of the truck. These are different sections of the truck. We're going to speak about what they are for, the slack adjuster, the U-bolts, right, the axle, all of these things we are going to speak about. These are critical components on a truck that we ought to take serious, right? not to be played with at all. Now, we need to ensure that the shock absorbers, we need to look, take a critical look at the shock, shock absorbers, right? Um, they should not be leaking. Yeah, we, we should have our torque, 
brought our tire at the end, our u bolts, our spring hangers. Um, all of these things should be in good condition. We should ensure that our air suspension systems are not damaged and are leaking, right? We should ensure they are not loose, they are not cracked, they are not broken, or they are missing frame members. We should ensure the, all of these things. And we should really take our safety very serious, right? Um, I don't, I, I, I've seen a lot of defective trucks on the network. Sometimes I see the slack adjust that way out at the 90 degrees. You can look behind the truck and see it. So we won't talk about that. Sometimes you see the brake drums, one, one, one up top there, so one down here. So. And then you wonder what type of braking system is this driver operating? It's clearly the braking efficiency of that truck would, is not good enough, right? So, so as you drive up behind a truck, um, the brake drums are there and you can see a lot of things glaring right before you. And they therefore mean that we have to pay more attention to the whole matter of truck safety and we as persons who drive these vehicles uh, um, and interact with these vehicles we must not turn a blind eye on these things right? now the exhaust system um, this thing that belch out smoke check for leaking parts sometimes these leaks can cause carbon, carbon monoxide leakage in the cab and this can cause poison, this can cause death, this can cause serious injuries to persons who are there. Uh, we don't want parts rubbing against the fuel system, tires or other moving parts. We don't want that. All moving parts must have their own movement apparatus and get, get their own friction. They should not be clapping up on other, other things because that can cause serious problems. You can operate in a truck without emergency equipment. You should have fire extinguisher in the truck. And for most countries, this is mandated. Also, you should have um, triangles, right? Some countries require people to have at least three triangles. So what you'll find out happening is that they would have one place at the front, two at the back, and they will be at different distances so that motorists who are coming on, on board and on stream will be able to acquire profound intelligence and know that something break down. So, so one thing I would like to, to say to persons, because I know there are persons here who don't drive trucks, right? But if you should see these triangles on the road, rest assured that um, there's a truck ahead, right? Um, if, 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 if you were not taught these things by an instructor, you are, you're aware now. Uh, I know the instructor don't teach these things, I know. Um, trying to find the instructors to get them to watch these things, but some have been upset um, because you people have been empowered more. Yeah. So what I would say is that um, these are things that you're supposed to know, right? Um, get this in your in your in your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit. Um, if you have a red shock, then sure you have um, spear electrical fuse. Don't 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 take it for granted at all. Now the cargo on the truck is very important. Make sure the car's cargo um, is not, make sure your truck is not <laughs> overloaded. <laughs> uh, so this is a big issue in Jamaica. Whenever the NWA fix the road in Jamaica, those rest assured that heavy duty truck is going to come and mash it up mm -hmm. and create lumps and bumps into the road network, right? Uh, you see those roads in St. Thomas, you see it in Poros, you see it in Scott Hall. Um, you see it all over the country. Um, heavy vehicle trucks damage the road surface. And yes, there are weight management, weight limit systems in countries, but for the most part, the enforcement is very weak. And enforcement is one of the most profound problems that we have um, with road safety. Um, you can have all the laws you, you want to have, but if you don't have the, the sustained enforcement, road safety enforcement, your battle towards stemming the tide of traffic crashes is going to be affected negatively. Um, but notwithstanding that, um, we have to educate, we have to empower, and we, and we hope that by virtue of us doing that, persons would then make solid choices. But we are fully aware that persons are, are, are disobedient. Right? And we know that in the books, disobedience cause disaster, right? And that is why we have a lot of these disasters happening because when you look at traffic crashes, I'm looking at that crash this week and I'm seeing uh, those human behavior, discipline, right? 
Be sure that the cargo is balanced and secure before each trip. So ensure your cargo is balanced, secured, and tight. Make sure that they are tied down. This tying down, just like how this one tied down. Yes, man. Good, good tying down. Um, this one, there's a lot of looseness happening here. So this, so this thing fall up. This is not supposed to happen. Now, if you are transporting hazardous goods, please, people, ensure the labeling is there. So that if there's a collision, people, the authorities would know what to expect. So they can prepare themselves from early out. So if somebody should call the fire brigade and said, um, it's a truck and there are, this is some fire brigade will ask, do you see some markings on the truck? And person say yes, and person start to describe them. And person may be able to, to tell them what, what it is. So, so because we, we want to, one thing we want to do is we want to create a new type of driver. We want to have a type of driver in this country that is filled with frenesis, Sophia and Sonesis. These are critical levels of wisdom. These are the levels of wisdom that we should strive for, right? Um, we, we, where we make better decisions. Knowledge plus prudence equal wisdom. Remember I told you that? Yes. So knowledge plus prudence you know, wisdom. In the book, Isaiah 4 verse 6, said, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. said so in the books also, um, without vision, the people perish. Let us not perish anymore. Let us have vision. Let us be filled with knowledge so that we can make better decisions out there. And how oh, can you get knowledge unless somebody tell you? We, we have made it our, we, we have made a deliberate, we have made it deliberate from July 1st to bring these information to you. And that is why I, I put a challenge out there. I have a prize. Yes, man, I have a prize. I want to give away something to somebody who can tell me that they watch, well, after, after watching all nine videos, that everything that I said in them, their instructor taught them it. But you're going to have to bring the instructor with you to it here. Yeah, the two of you. You want the instructor come. Because that instructor would need to get a big up to proper, proper big up, right? Um, but so far, some people have told me that nobody can forward. Nobody will be able to forward because no instructor teach them these things. Well, well if that is the case, I'll keep the prize. But notwithstanding that, um, we'll continue to share the information. And we do hope that when we come back next year at a time like this, and we'll push out the information and person say, yes, my instructor teaches it. So we are pushing driving instructors to come forward and to, and to up the tempo with quality, right? Quality, because um, my intelligence is that um, a lot of drivers don't know. So what I think we need to do, um, before we even inspect the truck, we should ensure the wheels are, are the, we should ensure that the parking brakes are on and the wheels are chopped. Um, chucked is the same thing that we say in Jamaica, catch the wheel with a stone, right? We may catch with a stone, we may have blocks that we catch it with, right? So now if we have to, and the parking brake look like this, right? So you will see parking brake on the truck, it's yellow, yeah. So when you go into a truck, you see the parking brake, so that will be pulled up, right? And these are different components of the truck. Get familiar with trucks, right? So part of the test going to be that you're going to have to identify different parts of the trucks, yes. So you have to do that. Right, um, so if you have to tilt the cab, if you have to tilt this cab, um, tilt the head, make sure loose items won't fall, right? Yeah. So what I think that should be done is that there should be a daily inspection of the trucks and the, 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 law, the previous report should be looked at, right? Defects must be corrected and evidence show that defects have been corrected. No one should be forced to drive a defective vehicle, a defective truck on the network. That should be defective, yeah. Right on the road network. So, so um, these things can cause injuries. These things can cause death. Checking the engine. So we're going to check after we check outside the vehicle. We're going to check inside the engine compartment. Right. So we check the oil level, the coolant level. We check the battery fluid level. We check the transmission level. We check the belts. We check. We're looking out for leaks or cracks. So we're doing that. Check it. Because remember, you know the truck. Is carrying millions of dollars, even billions of dollars worth of oil from Kingston to, to Montego Bay because there's a ship that is leaving at 5 p.m. this afternoon. And that ship is going to Iran to offload that, and that is money. So we can't afford to take anything for granted. There, can, there, there, is, no, there is no room for mishap at all, right? Now, they have made trucks to be much more fuel efficient now right? Much more fuel efficient. 
And that is why you will find chucks with noses now to, and that will, ent that will help to, to ensure that the chucks don't use up a lot of gas. It do help, right? So this is what people are doing. And we're going to speak more about that further down. So one of the next thing, thing we do, we start the engine and inspect inside the cab. So we start the engine, we inspect the cab, we ensure all lights, we check the dashboard, uh, we check what the lights are saying. Um, oh, let me go back on that matter. Yeah. In your car, you see, when you turn on that ignition, a lot of things light up there. Put in the chat room if you were taught, whilst you were learning to drive, what all of those lights on the screen mean. And if, if no, if you were not taught, tell me why you were not taught. Yeah, man, tell me why. Why you think you were not told what those lights mean? Because you know what somebody told me on Wednesday? They have a friend who was driving around in his car and he was seeing a bucket dripping. You know that bucket dripping on the, the dashboard? He was driving, driving, driving the car. And this is somebody who is a professional. I think this person was a teacher. If I don't, if I recall that this person is a teacher. Yes, he's a teacher, yeah. And uh, um, the person is a friend of the person. Person was telling the friend about and the friend, hold on, the person was saying for weeks. Friend was saying, you, better, you, 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 you have an oil problem. That's the oil light coming up. Yes. Person, I never know. When the person went in and checked the oil in the person car, lift the bonnet and check it. Person see Jaya's chip, Jaya's chip. So you know what I mean? Sooner or later, that person would have to go find some money to buy a new engine. So that is why we have sessions like these. You are to be empowered. And let me tell you something. Um, Elohim, you say, said you must seek knowledge. Yes, man. Knowledge, knowledge is one of the gifts of the spirit, you know. So you must seek knowledge. Solomon, Solomon did ask God for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's what you must ask for. You hear? And that's what you must seek after. Right? Seek after that. Because you will know the correct thing, then you'll be able to save your life. So know everything inside of this truck, right? Um, and things, right? Watch the gauges that are on the truck. Watch the gauges. They all mean something. Get familiar with them. Oil pressure should come up at normal within seconds after the engine start. Get used to all of this. And, uh, and um, the persons who are teaching you to drive trucks, they would have gone through these things with you. But you as a truck driver, you need to know. And some of you who have truck license, yes, I'm talking to things them. Some of you have truck license, you see, I will never drive a truck yet. Yes, man, we know, we know, the, we know the file, we know the file. We'll never drive truck yet, right? Get to know this, right? Get to know these things. Yeah, man, get to know these things. So ensure in your pre trick inspection, you are checking all of these things. Make sure you know all the parts, them and stuff, and, and, and make the, take the corrective measures. Check the control for looseness, right? Um, check your steering system, check your retarders. Retarder controls, check the brake control, check the foot brake, check the trailer brake, check everything. For the most part, there are four separate control user brake, service brake, retarder, secondary, parking brake. Um, get to know them. You cannot be driving truck and don't know these things. You can't have a truck license and don't know these things. Gentle people. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Once you're operating a truck, you must know everything about the truck, everything. Every part of the truck you're supposed to know, right? And if you don't know, um, that instructor don't work his salt, his or her salt. No, man, you don't work it, right? Check the headlamps. So you, you're st we're still doing pre-trip inspection, you know? And the pre-trip inspection is an intense process, intense. So you need to spend time on it. You can't rush people, rush this. Because down the road, the truck break down with the, with the billions of dollars worth of gas that must come and take up here. And that ship is going to leave at five o'clock because the ship must reach Panama by maybe seven o'clock. And don't think that that ship is going to wait on you. When you fail to ensure that your pre-chip inspection process was executed. So if it is that persons who you are paying to, to learn to drive did not teach you these things, 
We here at Road Safety Unit is telling you these things. Do these things. The lights, right? Be sure none is broken. Check your lights. Check your headlight. Ensure they are working. Check them. Check them. Check them. Check your mirrors and windscreen. Check them. Check them. Check them. Make sure they are clean. No dirt. No illegal sticker. Nothing that blocked them. Yeah, man. And ensure that you have your emergency equipment. We talked about that earlier. F extinguish uh, your, your triangles. Yes, man. Your, 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 your fuse. Get out. See, uh, see, uh, see what extinguisher look like. Make sure you have one of these in the truck. Yes. Make sure you have the triangles too. Can't anything happen. Yes, man. Right? So you're going to make a walk around the truck. You, you, you have your documents. See, you have your little charge your document. You're supposed to have that. So after you check the left front side, driver door, glass, side view, mirrors, all of these things you check. Ensure doors open and close freely and, 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 and they're not bulging out. And check your left front wheel. Check your left front suspension. Check your left brake. Check, 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 check. Check your axle, check your steering system. Check, 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 check. And after you check the left side of the truck, you check the right side of the truck, you're going to do the same thing, right? So there are some items that are on the, that are on the left side, but not. So when you look at the fuel tanks, check your fuel tanks, ensure there are no leaks. Make sure they, 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 this tank is, the bands are on it is tightened. Ensure that they, the cover is, the cap is tightened, right? So make sure that it's so. Check out, make sure you look at your, these wires here, these ear hoses, right? And make sure that they are in good condition. Check the rear of the engine, check your transmission, check your drive shaft, ensure it's not loose or broken. Ensure that you check, 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 check. Check your exhaust system again, your exhaust system, all the time. Check your exhaust system, right? We don't want leakages at all. I remember, I tell you earlier that the carbon monoxide will come into the cab and that can be dangerous, right? That can cause you to die. Check your spare tire. Make sure your tires are in good, good condition, right? Check your ear lines. These wires here are your ear lines, so check them. The green, the blue, and the black, they mean, and the red, they mean all different type of things. We're going to speak about that. Check the glad hands. Yeah, check your glad hands, right? Check your electrical plug, right? Check those things. Check, 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 check. Cargo securement is very, very important, people. Now, if this vehicle is an oversized vehicle, yeah, and we have a lot of them who transport, come on the road sometime, um, there should be signs, flag lamps, and reflectors, and that persons, other persons who are driving on the road should be made aware that these vehicles are there. So you shouldn't buck up on these vehicles on the roadway suddenly. They should be escorted. They should have flaggers and stuff like that. And for the most part, you'll find the police ahead to, to provide intelligence. Right, so so it, um, we need to communicate with all with everybody, and uh, these are some of the things that I believe strongly that our road users should be taught, and the persons who are acquiring driver's license. I mean, they're not necessarily know to how to how to drive a truck. They maybe learn to drive a car, but you need to be aware of of these oversight vehicles on the road network. Um, again, as I said before, the, the same process we did with the left side, we're doing to the right side, we're checking suspension, brakes, axle, nuts, spacers, and these things, tires, we're checking all of these things, right? Checking the lights, checking the lights, we're checking the lights, checking the reflector, we're checking the, fl the splash guard, we should have splash guards, right? We should have them. And uh, we do the same thing on the left side. We ensure the batteries, check the batteries, check the batteries, right? Check the batteries. Ensure they are mounted, right? And so we start the engine, right? And we check the brake system, right? To check that. Check, check, check. And familiarize yourself in every compartment of the truck, right? Check. Um, get yourself familiarized. Ensure they are in good, good order. For the most part, the vehicle has hydraulic brake. Pump the brake pedal each three times. We don't want air in our hydraulic braking system. For the most part, trucks use air brake system, so they they build up the air within the system. And this is how the, the truck air brake system looks like, how it upper look. This is, the, this is the schematics of the truck air brake system, right? That's the schematics of it. And um, 
we're not going to speak about the role of these parts because that's not, this is not the presentation. But by next week, you should be familiar with what, what is a governor. Yes, it's about governor, it's about compressor, it's about reservoirs, right? And we're going to tell you, I think that drivers should be able to do. But critical though, anybody who is driving an air brake, uh, a truck should be fully aware of the air brake system and how it really operates. And we should check it to ensure that our air brake systems are in good, good condition. So part of the inspection process is that we're going to do that, right? We're going to do that, right? Um, so with the parking brake, um, as I said before, it's that yellow brake, it's in the truck. So get familiar with really. it, pull to apply, push to release, right? Pull to apply the parking brake, push to release, right? Yes, yeah, so um, it, is, it is there. So we use it up. Make sure it is working properly. We test check it. It's not working, we'll go back, right? Now, if we are checking tractor trailer, ensure that the catwalk is good. Here is good. Ensure that the coupling system is also good. This is a part of the coupling system. This is known as fifth wheel, right? This is known as the fifth wheel. The kingpin will come in and lock in right here, right? So, and then that's how the trailer, the truck is able to move the trailer, right? We're going to speak more about these things and we're speaking about parts, but these things need to be checked. We need to ensure that this is not rusty. This is not broken up. It's not a good idea to weld your fifth wheel here. Mm -hmm. Those are you who love to weld the fifth wheel. It's not a very good idea. Yeah, it's not a very good idea. So the kingpin, right? This is the kingpin. It lock into the fifth wheel here. And that is what, yeah, that's a connector between the trailer and the truck, truck head, right? So, so just remember that, right? Um, and uh, as I said before earlier, um, if you find anything unsafe during the preaching, you say, anything you find defective, or unsafe during the pre-trip inspection, um, please, people, ensure it's rectified before you drive the vehicle. It can be calamitous. It can bring disaster. And remember that if, if I knew, did know that a crash is going to happen, I would not drive the truck. That can't help you. No, man. It's against a road traffic act to operate an unsafe vehicle on the road network. No, man. So one other thing we have to do, we have to inspect during the trip. So we watch our gauges for trouble. We use our senses to check for problems. We look, we listen, we smell, and we feel. Check critical parts when we stop. So you have a during this infection. So, so we're checking our tires, wheels, rims, brakes. It's not as intense as the pre-trip. But we must inspect during the trip to ensure everything is all right. Right? So ensure where what things are tied up properly. Again, this is the fifth wheel. The kingpin will come right in and lock right in here. And good, we can move our trailer. Right? Inspect your vehicle at the end of the trip. They are tour of duty. If you find any problem, report them to your employer. Whether or not you find problem, you must complete a written report and sign it. So we should be doing pre-trip, during trip, and after trip 